Okay. Here we go. So as photographers and content creators, we are tempted to literally bring everything we own with us every time we go on an awesome trip. Well, that's kind of what I did this last trip, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I just got back from a four-month trip to uh, Eastern Europe, and I wanted to show you what was in my bag, what I took, what did not work for me, basically the stuff that I didn't use, um, and then how I'm going to go forward and change that for this next trip that I got planned. Hey, if you're new here, I am Joel and I'm a filmmaker and photographer. And on this channel, you're gonna find a whole bunch of videos about those topics, as well as some gear reviews and even some of my adventures, uh, both past and present. All right, so before we get into this though, I wanted to set the ground rules here, so to speak. Um, in this video, is not gonna be like a full packing, like what to pack and what not to pack. I'm not gonna do that. I might do that in another video. Um, but rather, this is kind of a reflection on the last four months and uh, which basically my requirements are that I have to create content for my website, wanderinghearts.com, as well as the YouTube channel that goes along with that. And I'm also doing stock video and stock photography as well. So I'm doing a whole bunch of different things, which is why you'll see in here, I have a lot of different types of gear. If you are not doing all of those things, then maybe this video isn't the right one for you. I don't know. Um, because you won't need nearly as big of a kit as, as I do, right? At least I think I do, right? So anyways, take that for a grain of salt and let's go ahead and get into this. So the first big thing is why is this kit not working for me? And the main reason it, that it's not working is because it's just super heavy. Now, anytime you travel internationally, you are gonna be dealing with a lot of different baggage requirements. Now, obviously the easiest thing to do is to check you know, all of your gear into the, on the, into the airline, put it in Pelican cases, things like that. So it's super safe and secure or it won't get damaged. Um, but uh, that is not how I roll, right? Because I'm trying to be as lightweight as possible. Um, again, like I mentioned, I basically am a digital nomad. So um, location independent, whatever you want to call it. So I basically travel with one suitcase and my camera gear. That's pretty much it. Um, with that, I try not to have too much stuff to carry around. Because if you're traveling and you're using public transportation especially, like trains, buses, things like that, there's not a lot of space. And to be perfectly honest, this bag here barely would fit on most buses that I've been on. Um, but these are actually, this kit here is actually pretty suitable for a train travel. But if you start carrying Pelican cases and things like that, now you're lugging a ton of equipment and sometimes having to lift it up quite a few steps just to get it onto the train platform um, or even on an airline. That's probably the biggest one that people deal with is when you're having your carry on, you have very specific weight limitations and not all the airlines are the same, which is what I encountered, especially this last trip um, where I flew on KLM uh, from the United States into Vienna. And the KLM is actually pretty decent. Um, they have a fairly decent, uh, carry on baggage limitation. Like I was, little, I think I had 22 kilo. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's wrong. Uh, that was my checked luggage. Um, but I had, I think it was like maybe 12, 12 kilos or something like that. Um, maybe like 24 pounds is what I had for my carry on. And then for my, my personal item or hand luggage per se, um, you had a little less than that. Um, the trick is you can try to pack everything you want and get to the gate, but they can always weigh your stuff. And more and more airlines are starting to do this, which makes it a little bit harder. Because now at the gate, you're trying to figure out how do I remove pounds and pounds of weight from this stuff in order to, to get it on the plane. Otherwise, they're gonna basically make you gate check it. Um, the other thing to think about too, is when you are traveling, not all these airlines have the same requirements. So for instance, when we got to Austria, um, our final destination was actually Sofia, Bulgaria. 
So we flew a different airline, in that case I think it was Austrian Airlines, and they had quite a different uh, limitations. Like my, so I couldn't, I had four kilos less of weight that I could carry. I think it was maybe like 18 pounds total that I could actually carry for my main carry-on bag. And my, and then this one here actually wouldn't even work because it was too tall for their limitations. So essentially this fits all domestic flights I've done as w under the seat um, in almost every single other airline that I've flown. But like I said, Austrian, they have like a really specific guidelines and it's basically a briefcase essentially is what they're, they're letting you take on. So that made it really hard for me to figure that out. And so, um, yeah, so those are just some things to consider. And that's one of the main reasons why this kit that I have right now isn't working because as we're gonna go through all of this, but all of this did not fit in, did not fit the weight allowance. I literally had to take a couple lenses and actually pack them really carefully in my check luggage and the rest of the gear, I, and some other gear rather, I had to actually pack in my wife's carry-on bags as well because she was way under the limit because she doesn't carry much of electronic gear. So there's a tip for you if you have to, uh, but I'd rather have to use that at the gate than um, going there the whole way. I'd rather, I'd rather go to the gate with everything within the limitations or really close so that I can just like pull a lens out and throw it in my wife's bag if I have to versus having to uh, be taking a whole bunch of stuff out and just and then trying to see if it'll fit in her carry-on as well. All right, so with that, all that being said, let's go ahead and get into these bags. All right, so first off, let's start with this bad boy here. This is a uh, Stratica Series Rad Pack 2. Uh, it's the second iteration of it, and it's actually a pretty darn good bag. As you can see, it is quite compact, and I don't have them hooked up here, but you can actually put these up and cinch this down pretty good too. Um, I think it's actually made more as like a snowboarder bag because you've got like these great areas here where you can put like a snowboard or something like that. But it works really good for what I'm trying to do. And the best part about it is that it's a clamshell open, which is really nice. I like that. So in here, you can see everything kind of fits pretty easily here. There is some access. This isn't a review on the bag. Um, maybe I'll do a, a bag review later, I'm not sure. But um, I just wanted to show you that. So to start off with, I carry two different camera bodies with me. My main camera body at the moment is this here is the a7 III. Um, I've been shooting Sony for a couple years now. I used to shoot Canon, not that it matters, but uh, they're both great. Um, but I just started shooting uh, the Sony cameras um, a few years back uh, because I was just super impressed with the low light capabilities on a, uh, a music video I was, I was uh, producing and we shot like some night stuff with lightning and everything and it was just, I was just blown away. Um, so anyways, as my main camera, I mostly use this for video, uh, for doing like some stock video as well as my stills. Um, and I also have another camera, which is what I'm filming with right now, and that is the Sony EZV-E10. Um, I'll put an image right here in here of the Sony EZV-E10. And that is my main camera that I use for uh, when I'm shooting these types of uh, videos and things like that. And the main reason I do that is because my a7 III audio port is broken. <laughs> so I haven't been in the States or anywhere long enough that I can actually get this thing sent off and fixed in time. Uh, so I just have to use another, my backup camera basically. Um, but I do like my, my Sony EZV-E10. It is a pretty darn good little camera, even though it's built as like more of a vlogger camera. It's nice because it's interchangeable, uh, which is great because it means that I can use it for all of my other lenses. So for instance, as you can see, I'm taking a 17 to 28 Tamron. That's what I have on here. I'm also carrying this here, which is a Tamron 18 to 300, and this is an APS-C lens, and so it works fantastic with my Sony ZV-E10, um, and it gives me a pretty significant zoom range as well. 
I will be doing a uh, basically like a little review and I got some other videos coming up about these as well so you can check that out on my channel basically this combination with the Sony EZV10 and this lens as well as the one that I'm shooting on which is the Sony 11 now the Sony 11 I did not take on this previous trip so that is a new purchase and that's a little clue as to what I'm doing going forward um, but back to this um, I also am carrying the kit lens for the Sony it's just super lightweight so it's not a real weight issue for me um, and I just like it because it's a nice easy backup lens my other lens is here is this one here and this is the Tamron 70 to uh, 180 fantastic lens um, but the truth is is that this is one of those lenses that I barely used in the last trip here so the last trip I spent basically in Eastern Europe Bulgaria um, Bratislava uh, and then we went to a, a part of uh, Slovakia and then we went and I spent the rest of the time in the Czech Republic and so I never use this lens. I barely, I barely pulled this thing out. And it's a heavy lens too. So that is one of the big questions that I have is whether I want to continue to take this with me. The reason I grabbed this lens is because it weighs a lot less than this one. And it has the same zoom range. Actually, it has the entire zoom range, 18 to 300. So um, and now it's an APS-C zoom range. So it's equivalent of what is that 24 to 450 something like that which is really really impressive of course the drawback to this lens of course is that it is a um, it's a 3.5 to 6.3 so of course you're limited to uh, basically daylight kind of shots or a pretty steady tripod which um, I don't have I have a lightweight tripod which is what we're filming with here it is a Siru um, Traveler light it's a carbon fiber tripod and that thing only weighs like a pound and a half, I think, and it has been a fantastic choice. So next up, I've been, I have my 28 to 75 Tamron. And again, this is a lens that I didn't use as much as I thought I was gonna use it. So it's another one of those things that I have to question. I found myself using my all-in-one Tamron lens most of the time. Um, for for most everything that I was doing and especially any kind of videos like this or stock videos um, it's just it, it's a fantastic lens the 28 to 70 and of course it gives you the 28 which is nice but again it's a weight issue and if I'm trying to pare down to like the lightest weight lenses are some of the easiest things for me to get rid of so so that is one of the things that I'm trying to figure out uh, as to what I'm going to bring forward Next up, and this is another issue is, of course, with multiple camera bodies, you have all kinds of batteries to take with you. And so these are the ZV batteries and the A7 III batteries. And then these here are the batteries for the third camera that I have, <laughs> which is this the Sony ZV-1. And this has been a really fantastic little pocket camera and honestly if you're looking for a minimal kit this could be a, a good part of that so um, they think they just came out with a new version of this which has got a another fixed a wide fixed lens I think it's the ZV-1F or something um, I haven't used that one but if it's anything like this one here then it's a pretty solid camera it doesn't have all the bells and whistles but it does have things like mic input which is huge because it makes it super great so that you can add mics or wireless mics, anything like that, and get much better quality audio. But that's also one of the things that I'm probably not gonna be bringing with me because it's, again, it's added weight. Even though it's really small, it's just, it's just another thing that it's overly redundant. So with that, you've got all these chargers and stuff too, which becomes an issue. And this actually is the batteries. These are the batteries for my final camera, <laughs> which is the Osmo. And then this is my final 
piece of kit here, and this is my action camera. Um, and then, you know, great action camera. It's been pretty good, but we, we're looking at, I've got four cameras here and I don't need four cameras. So that is definitely not working for me. Again, even though this is really lightweight, it is just another piece of redundancy that is possibly unnecessary. And so finally, to like wrap out the cameras, I have this guy here, and this is my DJI Mini 2 drone. Great little drone. It's pretty lightweight by itself, but overall it does weigh a lot when you factor in all of these. I've got the, the basically the kit here that's got the extra, yes, extra batteries, which are quite heavy. And of course the controller is also weighs quite a bit as well. Um, but overall, uh, this is actually a pretty great little drone, but I have to admit, I did not use it nearly as much as I thought I would on this trip. And um, I have to wait till the end to decide whether I'm gonna take it with me on the next one. Okay guys, so the next one I wanna talk about is audio gear, right? So we've got, for me, I'm doing a lot of audio stuff. Because I've got a lot of cameras, I need to record stuff. All these videos and such. If you're not doing audio, obviously, or any kind of video work, then you don't need all this. But as a vlogger or whatever, you gotta have, you know, a way to pick up like good audio. Um, and so what I've been using is the DD, and this one here is the uh, the VMic D3, and it's a fantastic little guy. But it's the problem with it is it's heavy, like. It doesn't look heavy, but when you start comparing it to other things like this one here, the Duo, the DD Duo, this thing is like half the weight. With everything on it, it's half the weight and does a pretty decent job. So, so those are two of the audio pieces that I'm bringing with me, or that I have brought with me. And of course the Rode Mini, or Micro I think it's called. And this bad boy is a workhorse. So another audio. So I've already got three pieces of audio kit. And then I also have two sets of the, <laughs> the Rode Go mics, uh, the wireless mics. And the reason I have two is because this is a brand new set that I had purchased because this was the set that I had to replace. Basically I was on this last trip, we lost one of my mics. Um, which you can actually watch the video where I lost the mics if you'd like. Um, I'll put a link up here. It's a, a wine tour that I did on our other channel, Wandering Hearts. And we'll just say we had a little too much wine. So by the end of the video, I realized that I had somehow lost my mic, which was a very expensive mistake. And that prompted me to have to purchase another set because that left me with just one um, transmitter and one receiver, which is it enough for kind of what would I do? For these videos, it's fantastic, but you know, if I'm doing something with other people or doing interviews or anything like that, obviously that is a problem. So this is what we have, and of course all of the cables and things that like that are in there. Also part of my mic or my audio kit is I use the, these straps, which are great to kind of keep wireless mics up and wireless mics. So I used to do a lot more audio production. So um, not only did I, prior to doing this right now and being full-time, I used to travel a lot part-time and I used to produce and I did audio as well on like music videos and film and stuff like that. So I've got my my really nice mics, my favorites here, which are the Cos 11Ds. And so I've got two of those that I carry with me too. And in case I need to get like some, like just nicer or cleaner audio. Um, the little roads like I have right here, um, does a pretty good job. I've been pretty impressed with them, but sometimes I don't have a place to clip this or I just wanna make sure I have better protection or I want the mic hidden. And that's where these come in really handy. They're also fantastic if you're trying to be a little bit more stealth mode, <laughs> because if you're trying to vlog somewhere, you, a lot of people, they see your, once they see this, microphone on the top of your camera and they see the furry thing, they instantly know what you're doing. And they're like, nope, you can't come in here. You don't come, you can't, no filming. So 
going with a wireless mic is a little hot tip here on how you can kind of get into more places without being as obvious. Um, obviously, be respectful. If you're not supposed to film, don't film in there. Um, but some places, people, you just get a lot of looks and things like that. And it's bad enough that you have a camera pointing at your face sometimes. But when you have that on there, it just, everybody just stares at you. So if that makes you nervous like it does me, then that's when I usually rock a, a wireless mic. So anyways, um, with the rest of that kit, I just have some extra cables and things. Uh, this is like an HDMI. Uh, to mini HDMI to full HDMI and I have to admit I've never used this so there's another piece that I that I have um, these are gonna of course gonna be uh, basically ND filters for the Osmo and which are fantastic but I have to, to admit again another thing that I don't use nearly as much as I used to and then I have some random like adapters and things. Again, this is just so you can like mount a mic or something like on this thing. You can mount it out, out of the way or you can just get like one of these little attachments. Um, but again, this weighs a lot and honestly, I haven't really used it. The only time I've really used this in the last four months, actually I didn't use it at all in the last four months. So again, it's another piece of kit that, another piece of weight, a couple ounces here that adds up. And then all of my bag of GoPro parts, or basically the, the Osmo, like there's a mount, suction mount, and a bunch of extra mounts and things. This is like pared down, and I didn't use any of this this last time. So that's another question too. The, you know, do you bring that with me? It, it weighs at least a half a pound with everything. So it's another one that might not fit the methodology and the style of what I'm shooting. <laughs> Although having a suction mount is always nice to have um, in case you need it. And then we're gonna get into the next section here, which is lights. So with these type of videos, I sometimes you need a little extra light. And so I've been traveling with this, um, these little Yulanzi lights, and they're, they're great little lights. They put off a lot of power if you turn them up change the color, do all this kind of crazy stuff that I never do. But as you can see, they get fairly bright. Um, but again, these are, you know, they weigh stuff because they have batteries in them and they're magnetic. So that just adds a bunch of weight to it. And when you, I have like five of these things, which is way too many. So one of the things that I'm doing is of course, downsizing these. That's I'm gonna, because I don't need as many. And I also have this other guy here. This is a, a, a Liber Pocket Video Light. And again, it's the same thing. It is a pretty great little light if you need to just like film yourself and you need a little extra pop. But it does weigh a lot, so another. These are all things that weigh a lot. And of course, this is just one of those travel multi-adapters for traveling. This thing honestly is kind of pointless and I'll, maybe I'll do a video about that later, but honestly, if you know where you're going, you can just buy the little prong adapters that basically fit like this. Like this is the EU plug. You can just get like the, like for US, you can get the US to EU ones. They're really tiny and they weigh nothing. And they're super cheap and it's just easier just to buy what you need and take that with you when you go places. So you don't have to have like this, you know, four, whatever this is, six ounces, eight ounces of, of weight you're carrying around. Um, and they're way more compact too. Okay, so let's continue this on and I've got all of my extra lens caps or uh, lens shades, hoods, whatever you want to call them. I have to be honest again, I don't ever use these things, but I carry them everywhere I go. This is my kit for cleaning my camera, which you have to have. There's the rest of it. This is an issue that I have that I need to definitely pare down on because it's, again, really heavy, and these are all of my NDs. Um, with video, I like to use NDs to help drop that shutter speed down, um, especially in super bright light if I'm trying to keep a shallow depth of field. You know, if you're trying to shoot at f2.8 or you're trying to shoot like, you know, four or five, f6, something like that, and you don't want your shutter cranked super massive, then 
yeah, you throw some ND on there, reduce that light, and, and that is fantastic. But the trick is, is that I don't actually use all of these. To be perfectly honest, I only ever use two of these, and it's the ND12, and I think, what's the other one I use? Is the, uh, in the .9, I think. Those, those are the only two that I ever, that I hardly ever use. And so, but I carry all of these around with me. So that again, that's a bunch of extra weight because this is metal and glass. That is gonna have to, that is not working for me. And the big one here, my hard drives. This is how I travel and it is a lot. This is another area that adds up really quickly. Each of these drives, and they're pretty good little drives, these Western Digital Blacks, um, but these are just traditional like, you know, spinning disc drives. So they weigh a ton. They are basically eight ounces each. So when I start adding all of these up, it adds up quickly. Actually, there's one more, I don't know where it is, but there's three of these that I have, plus another four terabyte. These are all five terabytes. And then I have this smaller two terabyte that was kind of like a backup drive. And the reason I carry so many drives is because I have a ton of content that I'm still editing from basically, like this is like from the last 12 years. There's like <laughs> sessions on here that I've been still trying to go through for like stock footage and things like that. So I carry it with me so that I can have, if I have a moment, I can work on that and try to edit through it. And then these drives here are um, just the last couple years. As you can see here, this is basically everything that um, we've shot for stills and video and for my, both my channels. And so it just adds up. It's like five terabytes goes by pretty quick for the amount that we shoot. Um, and depending on how you're shooting, that obviously can you can whip through these things even quicker. I know when we were shooting on bigger camera systems, or if you're shooting 10-bit or whatever, or massive file sizes, then you just you go through drives like crazy. Um, for the mostly what I've been doing, I've been shooting 8-bit um, MP4 files, so they're not super massive. They're like 100 megabit files is what I like to shoot. Um, but they still, it still adds up quite a bit. And the biggest thing is the weight. The weight adds a ton when you're trying to travel. And these are things that you don't want to put in your, your, you know, you don't want to check these. I like to keep my drives with me and I usually like to split my drives up as well. And then one thing I don't have listed in here is going to be all of my, um, my cables and kit like that. And the cable kits can add up. You start adding like, 20 or 30 different USB cables and things that adds a lot of weight and then of course my SD cards and my micro SD cards these are not anything to really worry about weight wise um, but they are a fantastic way to save on um, well to save backups for hard drives and stuff is just to, every time you see a deal just grab a bunch of extra 256 gig SD cards or whatever from reputable ones because you can get burned if you don't want to buy like a cheap card because it'll they'll die and then you'll lose all your all, everything. Um, but they're a really great way, especially for short trips. I won't I wouldn't take all this stuff with me. But since we travel for months at a time, and in like this case, we're talking about a four-month trip, then you know it's good to have some extra extra cards as well, a little more redundancy. Okay, so that is basically everything that's in this bag. Now this bag of course has a spot where you can put laptop and all that kind of thing, but we will, um, I, I don't actually keep it in here because it just, again, it's just extra, extra weight and my laptop is massive. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to my personal item and this is just where the rest of my stuff is. So this bag, like I said before, I'm able to take it on most of my trips. Um, Again, it just depends. Like this last one was really hard because I had to use my wife's carry-on bags to put a lot of stuff in because it just all of this stuff just wasn't gonna make weight. Um, but in here I have the extra stuff that I took. Everyone probably is familiar with these little Joby tripods. Um, yeah, they're fantastic, I guess, but they're just heavy. And I found that I never, I hardly ever use this thing anymore. I used it when I first started 
vlogging a couple years ago and start doing stuff. And they're okay, but the problem is that these things, they start, half of these things are all busted here at the top. And so you can't put any kind of weight on them anymore. They're, they're fine for like putting a microphone or something on or like one of those little lights. And that's pretty much all I've used it for since um, in the, on this trip and even actually the last year or so. So this is another thing that probably won't be coming with me in my next, in my next trip here. Then another thing that I love, which are my, these are my headphones that I use. These are the Sennheisers. Um, they're the, what are they, the HD, they're the HD 20, 280 Pros. And these I used on set when I did audio recording because they have really good noise reduction. Basically, these things will just block out all the noise so I can just really focus on and hear what I'm doing. So I use these a lot when I'm editing um, as well. And the problem is, is this cable is like massively long and just really annoying and they weigh a lot. And to be perfectly honest, I have found that when I'm editing, I really don't need this amazing quality. So um, this is another thing that I'm probably not going to be taking with me. Instead, I'll just use my Bluetooth speakers or my just little set of uh, wired headphones. You know, they're, they do just a good a job, especially for these types of videos. You know, I'm not mastering a movie. I mean, I did master a movie with these, but um, I'm not doing that right now. So this is not going to be coming with me in my kit either. And then we get into more heavy stuff. And this one is a little bit harder to deal with. Um, you've got my obviously mouse for my key and the power supply. My power supply for my laptop is crazy heavy. This thing is like over two pounds by itself. And it's because the laptop that I have is pretty massive because I do a lot of 4K video editing. So I carry a giant Asus laptop. This thing is crazy heavy. It's six pounds by itself, which is a big hard thing for me to do because I don't know, I can't get rid of this I, unless I go down and spend a crap ton of money and try to go to like one of the brand new Macs or something. But unfortunately, this is what I have, and it is a beast. It is basically a workstation that I travel with, but it's six pounds, 6.8 pounds, I think, by itself. So with, with the um, power supply, this whole thing ends up being, this usually puts me overweight on my, on my hand, my personal item. This is literally my personal item, and because I can't fit anything else in there. So you can see that makes it a little hard when I'm traveling, which is why I have to basically try to pare down my main carry-on kit, or I have to find ways of which things am I willing to put in my checked luggage. So as you can see, carrying this laptop alone is just absolutely massive. This is an Asus uh, ZenBook Pro Duo. So it's got the extra screen here, which is actually pretty convenient um, when I'm editing. But like I said, the trade-off is it's humongous. So one other thing to think about too, with the packing and what I've been dealing with is the weight of my bags themselves. So for instance, this one here isn't too bad, but it's still, because it's got all this extra padding and stuff in it, and because it has like this extra section that you can store drives and things in, it just adds extra weight. So that becomes another issue to think about because now it's eating into my carry-on allotment as well. So anytime I can reduce this weight, the better. Um, oh yeah, plus my Peak Design thing here weighs a lot too. So one trick with this is I've been basically, if I'm not, I don't shoot travel days much anymore. So what I'll do is I'll take this off and put it in my checked luggage because it weighs a couple ounces, which again, it doesn't sound like much, but it adds up. And of course, this bag here is also, one thing I really like about this one is it's actually really, really lightweight. Um, I think it, it comes in at right around four pounds or, or just under four pounds empty, which is huge. But that's just something else. Like I have, an, I have other bags that I've I used to travel with. My last one um, weighed like 
six and a half pounds, six and a half, I think it was like six and a half pounds just for the bag. And it was the same size. You could fit the same amount of stuff in it um, or maybe a little less stuff. This one's a little better organized. Um, but nonetheless, that's an extra two pounds. So when you're still dealing with a weight allotment, if you've only got 22 pounds, that's an extra two pounds I save by going to a lighter weight bag as well. So, which is definitely one reason I will be keeping this. So that takes us into the final part of this video, which is kind of like, I've kind of hinted at some of the stuff that I'm keeping and what I'm doing, but I can tell you right now, this bag is definitely gonna stay with me. One of the biggest savings areas that I'm doing is I'm definitely changing my hard drives out. Um, in fact, I've got a video coming out here that I'll be doing uh, a, more specifically about some of the drives I'm changing out to. But instead of these massive heavy drives, I'm swapping, I'm swapping out to these smaller SSD drives. Uh, this one here is, I think, a four terabyte, and it weighs an ounce and a half. <laughs> well, two ounces, I guess, if you add the cord onto it. And then this is like one of the SanDisk Extremes, and this is another four terabyte as well. Again, it only weighs, it weighs about the same. They're like maybe two ounces total versus, you know, eight ounces plus the cord. So eight ounces plus the cord down to basically just two ounces. That is a massive, massive weight savings. So with that, I've been swapping out all of my major hard drives or these big hard drives in down to these little SSDs um, to save a ton of weight. And of course, they're also super like drop resistant and all that stuff too. Um, just like these are to some degree, but uh, these are far better with that. So that's one of the biggest things I'm doing going forward. The other big thing I'm going forward is reducing the cameras. So I definitely don't need all of these cameras. To be perfectly honest, I would like to actually get rid of the a7 III and replace it with either an a7S IV or a7 IV or, or possibly the um, that new uh, Sony what is it, the, a, the A5R or whatever it is, um, but that might be a little out of my price range right now. So, because that would give me a main camera that I can, for audio and for video, um, without having to have a secondary camera. But having said that, I do like my ZV-E10. I think it's a fantastic backup camera, and it was actually one of the cameras that I used the most on this last four month trip, because it's so much more compact. and. Now it does have its drawbacks. For stills, it's fantastic for that. You get excellent quality, but for video, you, you definitely, it does a horrible stabilization. Lots of massive like rolling shutter. So you pretty much have to put it on a tripod or you have to put it on a gimbal or something like that. And so one of the things I'm doing is I'm gonna be trying to fix the stabilization issue with that camera to make that one a little bit more useful. But I do like both of those. But that brings me down to like action cameras and stuff like that. I will probably still keep one of these action cameras because they are fantastic. Um, they are a really good way when you need to do a time lapse or whatever. That's something simple. They're, they're awesome for. Um, but but this guy here, as lovely as it is and as much as I love it, for long term travel, like the kit that I'm kind of doing, um, it's just not. It does not work for me. I just can't. I can't take the weight. Um, and especially when I barely use the thing. So, but if I did, again, if I did short travel, if I'm just going away for a weekend or whatever, in fact, I took um, the, the RX100 version, uh, Mark V is what I had before I had this one here. And actually I took that one to Ireland on a trip there, the, the second time I went to Ireland. And it was um, a very good all around camera. I got some great images with it. Actually, some of those images I've sold as stock photos. Um, so, you know, it's, that's a great way to do that. But again, it's just not, not in the cards. It's just extra weight that I don't need. The other thing is these mics. I got so many mics. I don't need all these mics. I'm actually selling this one, um, right now, as we speak. It is, uh, I think it just actually sold on eBay. So I got to pack that up here in a minute. Um, but this is a way to save weight for me. This little guy is a fantastic mic. The DD is also fantastic and it weighs actually a little bit less. So one of the big things I'm looking at right now is not even bringing this, but just this one here and 
keeping my my road uh, goes because these have been pretty fantastic, um, especially for all of the uses that I have. Um, just going down, paring down to something like this is what I'm looking at doing right now. And as far as lenses are concerned, I'm still quite fond of the uh, the Tamron here. Again, like I said, it has its downsides. You know, it's not as good a lens as say, you know, my 70 to, to uh, 180. This is a fantastic lens, but I'm not doing a lot of portrait work in my travels right now. I'm mostly just doing travel videos and just doing content. So for me, it doesn't make sense to have a lens that I shoot portraits with um, and taking that with me. So this is probably one of the lenses I'll be getting rid of or just not taking with me. And then that brings me down to the 28 or yeah, the 28 to 75, which is just, the, of course, it's the go-to lens. When I did wedding photography, this was this range. I, I shot Canon back then, but it was, you know, the, the 24 to 70 was the go-to lens, but that's what we shot everything with. And, um, and it is, it's a great lens. It's great for video. It's great for everything. So I'm on the fence on this one because as much as I love it, um, this one does a pretty darn good job too. The drawback here is it does limit me a little bit because I have to shoot on the the uh, APS-C camera body, whereas this lens on the Sony a7 III in crop frame mode really limits my file sizes. I get down to like, I think 11 megapixels per image, which is something that I'm doing an experiment on right now because I don't know if I, if I want to deal with that small of an image. Um, it's plenty big enough for stock photography and for our website and everything else that we're doing. So it's perfectly plausible within the scenario that I'm doing. Um, but it, you know, just, I don't know. I, I kind of prefer to have a little bit more meat to my, to my file size. So I've been doing an actually an experiment and I'll do another video about that, um, where I'm looking at shooting an APS-C. 11 megabit file here and then doing some upresing with some uh, additional software to see if how satisfactory that would be. Um, once I figure that out, I will determine whether or not I end up actually bringing this or not, or whether I bring the 17 to 28. Um, so that's pretty much it guys. That's what, that's where I'm at. Um, like I said, these are going to be going, I think I can get away with maybe one ND because I don't need as many NDs. I'm never shooting more than one camera at a time anyways. And it really only takes a few seconds to swap it out. These little lights, again, I don't need all of them. In fact, I'm listing a couple of these already on, on, my, on eBay just to try to get rid of them. Um, and I'm gonna probably just go down to just keeping probably one or two of these little Ulanzis and then the one like Liber pocket video light. Um, those seem to be my favorite because they're great for if I just need to add a little extra light somewhere. Um, again, these are great for rooms, but they're not going to compete against daylight. So, you know, you, that's where you have to weigh the weight out or not. Is this going to be worth it or not? Or if you're in a dark room where you can control the light, well then that's, this can do okay. It can be fine. Um, but otherwise, uh, and then finally, of course, I have to decide on my drone whether I'm gonna to continue to take this with me because it does weigh a lot. And honestly, I did not use it that much, mostly because I have a fear of flying my drone, which is, I don't know if you have that same fear, but I am always afraid of flying my drone because I'm afraid someone's gonna yell at me because I've gotten berated by people flying a drone just in a public space, you know, no, not doing anything stupid or sneaky or anything like that. Just trying to get some pretty shots and just people just yelling at you like crazy. Um, so that's mostly been the United States, uh, but uh, I don't know. So I probably will take it with me. I'm going to try to fit it because the place, some of the places that we're trying to go to on our next trip is going to be benefit a lot by having some drone shots and getting some video from that. And then, like I said, getting rid of these, I just don't need to take them with me. I can, well, what I'm doing, they're unnecessary. They're just overkill for, for the quality of the videos that I'm producing right now. Um, and that's about it guys. So thanks for watching this. I hope some of this, this deconstructing this was helpful for you. 
um, because it becomes a big pain in the butt to try to take all of this stuff with you everywhere and especially when you start lugging it around with all of your other luggage. If you're traveling faster on your trips and you're going from place to place to place, then it's gonna, the weight of your kit is gonna really, really weigh on you. I mean, quite literally, it is going to weigh, you're gonna wear you out and you'll be feeling it and be wishing that you didn't have everything with you. Um, but on the other turn, if you're like us, where we travel a little bit slower in our travels, then you know, it's not a big a deal having extra stuff with me, like I like on this last four month trip. I mean, we didn't move that much, so it wasn't too big of a deal. I could just throw what I needed in the bag for the day and then take that out. But it's still overall like way too much to try to get, especially on the public transportation, and which is what we use a lot of. We use a lot of trains and buses. And so just trying to lug all of this stuff plus our luggage with us too um, has made us rethink a lot of those things and my kit is one of them. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you didn't, I didn't bore you to death with this video. Um, and I hope you learned something. Leave in the notes in the comments about like what you're doing or anything that's worked for you um, or anything that you think I'm doing that's absolutely bonkers or crazy. Um, and of course, if you don't travel like I do, well then don't comment because <laughs> that's like, <laughs> that's apples to oranges, right? So, but if you're in a similar zone, your creator that is either vlogging or traveling like this, then by all means, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts and your opinions, any tips you have. Other people would also watching this video would be wonderful to hear that too. And of course you can like, subscribe, subscribe, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know the whole YouTube thing. So you can do that if you like. And if again, if anything is helpful, I got links in the description to, I think most of this gear, maybe not all of it, but most of it, but they're like Amazon links and stuff. So you can, if you want to use one of those, I appreciate it. Um, or there's a link for, you can buy me a beer if you, if you found this helpful. So I appreciate that too. Thanks and definitely check out my channel for some more stuff and more videos where I talk a bit, hopefully talk less and more concise, but where we talk more about uh, some of the things that I'm doing, like these tests with the, the lenses and stuff. Um, and then I will be doing a new video once I have finally get everything figured out for the next trip. I'll post that too. Thanks and see you later.